Welcome to DaVinci's Discourse, where the minds of today's most innovative entrepreneurs are unveiled and explored. And my name is Kyle Campbell, your guide on this journey into the depths of the entrepreneurial psyche. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into the minds of the greats. This is DaVinci's Discourse. All right, man, let's do it. So Rampton, brother, it's awesome to have you here, man. Why don't you tell me a little bit about hey. yourself? I love this question. I'd love to hear your answer to it. What is the answer that you would give if somebody were to ask who you are? What would you tell them? My name is John Rampton. I am a proud father of three amazing kids and trying to be an amazing husband. And I'm an entrepreneur how i'd answer it i love it man yeah pretty simple most important thing to me is my kids then actually number one important thing to me is myself like i'm the most important thing like i'm not trying to be mean to, to my wife or anything else i'm the most important thing because i know if i fall apart and this uh, this is truly advice for you guys coming i mean i'm jumping straight into advice you need to be the most important person in your life so i'm the most important person in my life because if i fall apart my marriage is going to fall apart. And if my marriage falls apart, then my kids fall apart. So I, I need to be number one in my life, then my marriage, then my kids, I think in that order. And then other things, uh, other things can take precedent, but I think those are the most important things in my life. So, and, and rant, I'll have a lot of those. I love it, dude. I love the hierarchy that it's true, right? You got to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others. A lot of people get in the trap of um, self-sacrificing without realizing long-term that they're not able to contribute to the sources they're trying to contribute to without having the the core yeah. of the, the self, right? Maybe. I mean, I, I did that. I did that for years. I mean, I did that for probably 15 years. I took care of other people. It was always about my wife or about this or about that. And I started like, disregarding things that made me happy, like disregarding a little on my health, a little on eating, a little on going to the gym, a little bit on, you know, self-fulfilling things, a little bit on me. You know, I forgot those things, you know, and because of it. So no kidding, right? So, okay, man, I love that. Let's get into what you do for a living. I love how you separated the two, by the way. What do you, if somebody were to ask this question, then what do you do for a living? Somebody at the bar or coffee shop or whatever, what do you do, man? What do, what do you say to them? I mean, it really, I'm an entrepreneur, so I have a lot of different entrepreneurs. So uh, at Hierarchy, I mean, I have a calendar app. I'm, I have a calendar company called calendar.com. We help people easily book and schedule meetings easily. Uh, I also have a, a finance company where we help people with annuities and retirement. We have a digital marketing wing. We have a media wing. We have uh, and I do a lot in real estate. I also do a lot of investing in companies. So I kind of, it's more based on who I'm talking to on what I do for that day um, and what I'm focused on at that time. But at the core of my uh, business, I have a calendar company that we're trying to build and grow, uh, help people be a little bit more productive online. I love that, man. I love that. I love the domain too. I mean, come on. Yeah. You got like the, the $10 million domain calendar.com. It's freaking <laughs> badass, dude. Seriously. Um, I've got the it's domain. It's a really good one. Freaking badass, dude. Go I've got the domain for, because uh, I had an idea of something similar that you do, but with an AI component yeah. that automatically organizes the uh, the, the scheduling and, and sends the, the links and, and also has maybe some... some the way I pictured it is punctual.ai. This is, um, it's yeah. not, it's not created yet, but then in the future I can see you have an AI that you just tell it what to code for you and it can set up the actual uh, software end of the business for me. So this is the plan is to have it so that, um, somebody books a meeting with you. And then on top of just the peer scheduling, the software also does a psychoanalytical scan to understand what this person's motivations are in a sales call, for example, <laughs> or in a podcast interview, what they'd be most, uh, prompt, uh, what they'd be most able to deliver value in the do domain of uh, being able to That'd have be cool. these, right? These psychoanalytical de um, deliveries and be able to have that, yeah. that data on somebody when you go to talk with them automatically delivered to your, uh, to your inbox. So that's go that, build that's it, man. Go build it. I'm waiting for the idea. AI to be able to build it for me. I'm too damn busy, man. I'm waiting for it. Like a tight <laughs> I know. Bam, build it up. I know. I say, we're good to go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's the problem with entrepreneurship is we all have a million ideas. Yeah. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs, like even me, like I could take this idea, run with it and go and yeah. people on this podcast too. But people are just too damn busy. So like it, really, if you're going to start something in entrepreneurship, um, 
you got to just not be afraid of telling a million people. I have people all the time come and pitch me and they're like, you know, sign this. And I'm like, I mean, I'll sign it. But like, I I don't think I've seen one of those people become successful because they're so pre caught up on protecting it and having this and having that just just start, just start today, just go like somebody even take that idea. It's a great idea. Great. If you do it great, if you don't, but somebody else take it, build it. Um, You know, we need it. Right. No, no kidding. Dude, you hear people where it's like, I'll oh, sign an NDA before we talk and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, man, I want to see what, what comes out of yeah. sharing ideas and being able to have these blossoming experiences. It's like all cheese ball and shit, but you know what I mean? It's you get to see what For comes sure. out of it. Um, yeah. So dude, I want to get into how you started calendar.com. First of all, how the hell did you get the domain? And then we'll go into the business yep. behind it. Yeah. I mean, so let's go background behind it because we didn't start with calendar.com. We started with calendar.co, which we bought for a couple thousand dollars at the time. And we launched a business. And before we we went and invested serious money for it, you know, seven figures on it, we actually spent time and energy building it and getting revenue in the door. So basically why we built it was at the time I was using a competitor. I was using a company called Calendly. They're probably one of the biggest people in the space. And Tope, who's the founder, freaking awesome dude, love him to death. He's amazing, right? And they built this product, but there were certain things that I didn't like about the product. For example, some of the privacy concerns in it was you have to share a calendar with a main calendar. So you have one calendar and then all your other calendars have to be shared with that calendar. And that's how you do it. They don't. And that was a concern for me because if I'm sharing my calendar and I have teammates or things, they can see what's on my personal calendar. And I don't necessarily like that. And the availability just doesn't sync perfectly. At least it didn't back in the day. Now it might now, and there's Google's up their privacy and Calendly is up their game as well. But back in the day, there was no privacy. So I was like, you know what? I think I could go build this. So we built it and we built it from the start to authenticate every single one of your calendars. So if you have your work calendar, your personal calendar, your side hustle calendar, it just shows as unavailable times on each one of those, but does not share the data with other parties. So I think that's really important to people. And we have noticed that's very important, especially because our biggest customers are in the healthcare space where they legally can't share data mm. from a doctor that he has a gynecologist appointment and share that with a personal calendar and such. Now, none of our competitors do that. To this day so it creates a very good privacy buffer from people so you're not sharing data and that's that's essentially why we built it um if, if you're not looking for privacy i mean all, there's a lot of amazing good options out there but i just didn't find that out there and it's still not out there so except for us which i'm very happy on i love that there you there's, go that's why we built it right it's, it's freaking sweet yeah how did you how did you go about getting the even when it was calendar.co how did you go about getting the the because yes there's a need in the marketplace but the need and being able yep. to to channel and, and be able to commute or um, uh to, to have your your solution market and get place, customers to, right so there's two very different things the solution and the communication of the solution and so how did you get the the, yeah. the two together so they're connected the way they are yeah. So um, basically, we kind of went out and built the product very similar to some of our competitors out there with, with a few differentiating things. And then we went to people and we just cold outreach, emailed and LinkedIn and messaged and worked our way to the right people. And we found that other people had the same struggle as us. And then those people started, we really focused in the, on those customers and building something for them. And it, you know, our product was clunky. It still has issues. It still has problems. But those customers, we solved a very core problem that they had. And they're willing to, you know, forgive some of the stupid mistakes or stupid, you know, faults or issues that your software has because you're solving a very key component in their life. So we focused on them. Now, background on me, I'm a marketing guy. I'm an SEO guy. So SEO, for those of you who don't know, is search engine optimization. So when you search something in Google, I want to be the number one result because that um, drives a lot of traffic. So we were ranking for the term calendar and we wanted to be number one for the term calendar. 
And we started ranking higher and higher and higher for that keyword. And Google started rewarding us because that's my background. That's what I know how to do. So that's my unfair competitive advantage. Now, my competitive advantage is not building a product. It's not paid search. It's not this, it's not that, it's SEO. So I found other people who are really good at building products. So when you're building a product, this to you, the entrepreneur out there, try and think of your unfair competitive advantage. It might be sales. If it is sales, go team up with somebody who has an amazing product and come in and say, hey, I will be sales for you and team up together. Find somebody kind of like yin and yang, the things that work really, really well together Find somebody that is your yin if you're yang and vice versa, right? Find that opposite person where you're not good at the things that they're good at. So I went and found that and found somebody who was really good at building product, really good at this, really good at that. And I combined what I was good at and mixed it in with them. And I mean, that, find I mean, again, it like just, that, man. it's so difficult to find somebody who can be the yin to your yang, you know, to have that, that perfect dualism yeah. that creates the wholeness at the core of it. How do you, how do you, how do you find your co-founder, for example? Um, I mean, my co-founder was found, uh, we were both working, we both had these digital agencies and my digital agency did one thing in. I met this guy at a conference and he's like, oh my word, I really need what you have. And I was like, well, I kind of need what you have. And we started just, we actually, it didn't, it wasn't even business in the beginning. He like, Mm. I met him and I always go up to people and I say, hey, how can I help you? And I genuinely mean like, how can I help you? And I have a numbers game in my life. So my numbers game is one in every, th- I, I help people out. And when I say I help them out, I really try to go above and beyond and help them with something that they're not good at. Now, I write for a lot of major publications like Inc, Entrepreneur, Forbes, Read, Write, Do, NASDAQ, uh, Globe and Mail. Uh, I mean, you name it, I, I have probably written for it. TechCrunch, Mashable, New York Times. I've written for everyone, right? So I can sometimes get people links and quotes in very high authoritative magazines because I want to help people. I want to quote people. I want to make them more successful. And that's something in my power that I can do very, very easily that they could never get unless they paid somebody tens of thousands of dollars. Now, I can get that for free and just help people out. So I'm constantly trying to get people talked about in media or make very valuable introductions. So that's the helping people. I help people. So I met my co-founder. By he needed something and I helped him out. But for me, I want to break out a tiny bit in math. I find that one in every 10 people that I help will help me back. One in every 10. So I help 10 people, nine will not help me. One will help me, right? Will help me back. Mm -hmm. Now, one in every 100 will actually turn into a financial relationship where they're paying me money or money or some sort of money exchange is passed in between them, one out of 100. So usually it's one out of those 10. So one out of 10 means 10 out of 100. So one out of every 10, so it's just a numbers game. Now, one out of every 1,000 people will turn into a multi-million dollar relationship. Now, that's me helping without having any, wanting or needing anything in return. One out of 1,000 people will turn into a multi-million dollar relationship. Now, that might not happen day one or or month one or even year one or even year five. But over the course of that relationship, it will turn into a multi-million dollar relationship. So if I want to start making a million dollars a year, I need to help three people every single day. It Mm -hmm. breaks down to simple math, the mathematical Mm -hmm. formula. Now, my business partner, John Hall, he's just one of those people that I helped. And then he helped me back. And then I helped him again, and then he helped me again. And then I started paying him money, and he started paying me money. And then all of a sudden, it turned into a multi-million dollar relationship where we had different companies, and we were helping each other out, and money was exchanged. And it started becoming like a multi-million dollar relationship where we were working. And at a certain point, he was selling one of his companies, and we were like, you know what? We really enjoy working with each other. We really work well together. And... We really enjoy helping other people. So let's actually go make something. And we started a different company. And then along the way, both of us had the same issue with calendars. So we went and built it. Hmm. I love that's that. how I met my current business partner. That's, that's it wasn't, and it was over the course of like four years. 
It wasn't like, oh my word, you're the most amazing person. Let's go work together. We could build this. Right. It was like, yeah. no, we'd actually work together. We we had transacted easily one point five to two million dollars prior to us starting to work together, like from a business partner standpoint. Dude, I love the way you look at that as if you just talked about helping three people a day to potentially making a million dollars at the end of the year, as opposed to getting three clients or, or trying to, to get X, Y, and Z. You're talking about how can I give, how can I contribute? And like a lot of people will shoot smoke about it and be like, yeah, well, I want to give to as many people, but the real goal behind it is, is to get something at the end of the day. Whereas you're not looking at it like that, man. You're talking about genuinely helping. I mean, it, it does, I mean, it like, does I, boil I mean, down course, to that. Right? Like, because it goes, it boils down to exactly what you said at the very beginning, which was how do yeah. I, I, I'm number one at the end of the, at the hierarchy, right? Which is because you get to Take yep. care of yourself so that you can continue to help the others. So if it's a Correct. full loop there. What are some of the ways yeah. that you go about helping these people? And you guys, like, you guys, hey. it's it's a mathematical formula. It's yeah. like, and you got to find whatever it is. I also have a skill that I know is worth a lot of money to a lot of people. So I can, and I can give that away. And there's a lot, and, and it costs me essentially nothing. It does have every single one of those things cost me money. You know, say each one of those people, it, Honestly, it probably cost me like a hundred dollars per person. So, and I, I'm helping a thousand people. I mean, that's real money. That's tens of thousands of dollars that I spend on this whole mathematical formula. But I know at the end of the day, that math, that math very like easily equates to more. So, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Next question. I love it, dude. No, no, no. We're not going to the next question. We're going to the inside this one because okay. we're at the, okay, we're at the, the outside ring and I want to get to the, the damn center of this bad I love boy. It. So let's let's say like let's say you're looking at helping three people a day. And it might be not it might be five one day, two the next day, whatever, but let's say it's three on average. For sure. What are some of the ways that you actually go about how do you know what help to give them? And how do you you know yeah. that's to balance the not giving too much of yourself so you don't have enough to give away uh, to destroy yourself yeah. by helping others like you did for fifteen years? How do you how do you balance sure. too? How do you know what help to give somebody? Yeah, so help comes in the way of a lot of things. So usually when I start conversations, I start conversations with, hey, without knowing anything about who I am or what I do, <clears throat> what is your biggest struggle right now and how can I help? Mm, mm. It's what I ask people. So it's the same question to every that, single dude. person out there. What mm. is your biggest struggle and how can I help? And you know what? Sometimes people will be like, you know what? My biggest struggle right now is actually my kid who is having issues in school or this or that. And I'm like, all right, well, let me go see if I know somebody. And I just reach into my arsenal of people and I say, hey, I know this person. I know this. I know this. I know this. And you know, I try and really focus on what I can help with. So, or who I can make an intro and it might just be an intro to somebody. It might be marketing this. I'm speaking to lots of business owners. So usually from a marketing, I can help them on anything marketing. And I'll, when I dig into what I do, I'll craft it more towards what they, what they're doing so I can help them out in the best way possible. But you know, it might be with their kids. It might be with relationship. It might be with fitness. It might be with um, choosing a style of carpet for their house. I don't know. Hmm. Like, but until you get a person and ask them, um, what their biggest struggle is right now, you won't know how you can help them out. And then so. not only asking what they're struggling with, but the preface to that, which was say, you don't know anything about me or what I can do, because if, if they looked at it from the lens of, oh, this person helps with calendars. So I have to give a problem that I'm struggling with my calendar, which might not be a, a very pressing need as opposed to them yeah. looking to, <laughs> they're struggling with, with a relationship or, um, I don't know, all kinds of things. Yeah, people struggling with cal uh, with calendaring. That's, that's not the people's biggest struggle like ever. Like it's a struggle. It's a need. It's a problem. We have a solution. Great. But it's never a person's biggest struggle. For example, Kyle, right now, what is your biggest struggle right now? Let's work through this. What is your biggest struggle right now? And how can I help or us listening to this podcast? How can we help? What is it? Biggest struggle right now. Uh, right now it's getting the damn mortgage because my fucking mortgage specialist is being a pain in the ass going all kinds of details because of the underwriting process. Um, but the, the, the real problem that I'm having with my business and this kind of shifts because I, I, I shifted it, it from, mean, by the way, business, let's not, let's shift. Let's go on to mortgage. 
let's di- let's dig into it because there's a lot of smart people who are actually probably mortgage people on this phone call. What's the issue with mortgage right now? Go for it. Um, it's it's securing the because as an entrepreneur, we don't have the pay step, the paychecks every two weeks. You're gonna get X, Y, and Z no matter what happens. So there's fluctuation, yep. and so when it comes to getting a mortgage Correct. or any any lending situation, even getting a car finance, you have to have some proof that there is going to be ongoing um, financial income for for you know without having the too big of a fluctuation happening. Um, and so yep. that's that's the struggle that I'm having right now. Is yes, I've got the income, but it's it's difficult to prove that it's going to be continuing over time without significant fluctuations. Um, so that's that's the yeah. issue that's, that I'm facing right now, personally. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And I want to let you know that I've got a free book that you can get if you want to tap into more of these resources. And you can get that for free at kylesbook.com. Back to the podcast. That one's a, that one's a really hard one. Um, so breaking that down for entrepreneurs out there, if you're looking to qualify for a home loan, a bank, most entrepreneurs just kind of want, they quit cold turkey, their jobs, but you need to actually think before you quit your job and go cold turkey, that you need two to three years of verifiable income yeah. in order to qualify for a loan. And most entrepreneurs don't necessarily think that. So if you're an entrepreneur, think before you quit your job or go buy that car, because that car will count against you. There's a, what's called a debt to income ratio, and you don't want to throw that off. So you want to have everything paid off essentially before you do that or get into your home before you quit your job because they want verifiable income for the past couple of years or guaranteed that you're going to have that same type of income for the foreseeable like minimum two years, most likely like five years, right? So for you, um, do you pay yourself the same amount? every single month i i pay myself relatively little so it's uh it, so the answer is yes and no i mean it depends i've got zero debt great credit i thought for sure i'd be able to get a house but and i, and I got pre-approved and everything's looking good except for the underwriting yeah. process where they're they're being a little more stringent with it so um so really we'll hard so i highly recommend something that i did years ago was i went to uh, gusto and i set up and i started paying myself every single month, the exact same amount I was salarying myself and then paying taxes on that. So if you're an entrepreneur, you want to be able to make sure that you have enough where you can salary, put yourself on a salary and have cash there. Now that cash will go up, down, up, down, up, down, but pay yourself um, and have enough money in that to pay yourself for a little bit and be paying yourself every single month. And the more you pay yourself, the better it will be for getting a loan. That's why I highly recommend before you quit your job, go get a loan um, because you it's very, very, very hard um, to qualify for a loan. And I remember when I was getting my loan, uh, I was not paying myself, but I had like a bunch in savings, but it didn't really matter at the end of the okay. day. You could I have, you could have a million dollars in savings and have a $300,000 loan for a house and they're still going to give you grief if you're an entrepreneur. So um, if you don't have that, if you have your, your income goes like this as an entrepreneur, instead of going like this, what you need to do is have your income like this and pay yourself, have a bank account and pay yourself the exact same amount of money every single month. And if you're an entrepreneur, do not plan on getting a home loan for two year, two full tax returnable years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, there are a few ways you can get around that, but it's really, really hard. So, uh, and pay off all your debt, but you're in a hard spot. It's really, really hard. Sometimes there's a couple of different people. Usually, if you're going for a loan, I highly recommend not going to one of the big banks, but going to a smaller processor. I got mine through Van Dyke Mortgage. Uh, they were very, very good. They got it. Um, and, but they did, as I was going through the process, they made me set up paying myself a standard amount and they wanted that for Mm. three months. And they're like, oh, this person had got a new job, even though the job was for myself. And look, here's the exact same amount of money. A bank, when they're doing these audit risks, wants to see the same amount of money. So I actually almost suggest that for you right now is going through and doing the same amount of money. But there you go. Hopefully that was a little bit of a teaching lesson for all you entrepreneurs watching slash listening. (laughs) I I want to dissect your your process that goes into 
Because yeah, helpful is all health. First of all, you diagnose the problem. Second of all, you you got a process that you go through. And I love the way that you look at it all because it's no there's no selfish motive behind it. You don't you're not you don't have like this this voice in the back of your head. Oh, I've got I'm gonna sell them my mortgage course or you know it's like nothing like no. that. It's it's just you're genuinely trying to help somebody. I have I have no mortgage course. I've never sold a mortgage, <laughs> and I'm not a mortgage lender. I'm just an entrepreneur who has been through some of these struggles before in my life. And you can relate to almost anyone on any subject, mm -hmm. um, even if, again, I go into the carpet situation. Oh, I, I'm trying to have a hard decision. I'm having a hard time deciding what type of carpet. All right. So what's your budget? Okay. Mm -hmm. What color do you want? Oh, it's between these three colors. Okay. So mm -hmm. the best way as an entrepreneur to decide what type of color you want is you go to your wife and say, which do you like the best? And then your wife says, or spouse or partner, or whoever it is, you go to that partner and you say what do you like the best and whatever they choose is what you should choose because you probably don't even care and if they are like oh you know i'm thinking this but i'm not sure of this it's like oh so you don't really care well i for sure don't care let's flip a coin and just go with one of the two because i think that's an amazing option or let's ask one three people and choose the best of all of ours you know, you just work through whatever situation it is and try and help them the best that you can. And sometimes the best option is I don't have an answer for that. But you know what? I'll ask three people. And I know three very smart people who might have a solution for you. I love that so much, man. It's, you're helping them see things from a different point of view because I say this all the time. And it's so true. It's so hard to see the label from inside the jar, right? I learned that from Joe Polish. It's, it's sure. a great saying. It's hard to see objectively what you can only experience subjectively. And so you're helping people really get outside the jar and be able to... It, it, we we I didn't expect the conversation to come here, but it's so fascinating because you're somebody who's connected <laughs> to a shit ton of people. And so you've got a process that you followed to be able to give to three people every single day and have that opportunity to build that relationship as opposed to hopefully get some sort of financial benefit from them. Uh, so you diagnose the problem. For I mean, if you're if you're going to go through for financial benefit, you're going to fail most of the time. Right. Like you have to come from it from an actual that, right? helpful standpoint and wanting to help. Um, and you'll be, you'll get some, if you're coming from financial, there are people who are very, very good, um, at coming from a financial perspective. One of them is now I don't necessarily agree with their ways all the time, but like Grant Cardone, right? He is so financial. He is sell you into his course. He's do this, get you to invest in here and bam, bam, bam. And he probably loses nine out of 10, but he might gain one out of 10 and those one out of 10 might have a good experience and then they'll invite others and invite others and invite others. And it's how he's built his business. Not necessarily, And that's not saying I agree with anything him or what he does. Because if you look at some of my reading, I actually way bashed him way back in the days because he was a total, a little bit of a, a, a snake oil salesman. I, I called him out. He actually, we went to dinner. He invited me. He discussed his things. And I was like, dude, you're full of shit. <laughs> and to his face, this is me and Grant, right? And he's like, yeah, I actually probably should change that. And guess what? He changed, actually changed over the course of like three years, some of his ways. And I think it's made him a better entrepreneur because he's listened, not saying I was the reason because I'm sure there, there was a lot of people saying it, but he's changed a lot of his ways and now he's not as snake oily, right? And I think as entrepreneurs, we can learn from that too, because sometimes we have a way of doing things and we're in this glass jar, as you said, Kyle. Like we're in this glass drawer and we might not be able to see all around or see this or, or we can't get out. We have to listen to other people and take their advice. Some of it's going to be good. Some of it's going to be bad. It's freaking cool, man. It's so hard to be able to, to get that objective opinion. And what you're helping people do is really see from that external viewpoint. This is how I, maybe you haven't thought about this. And I'm thinking of ways you can use AI because I love AI, dude. I'm freaking, I love, love AI. AI. Yeah, dude. So I'm thinking about, you can just even ask ChatGPT, what are some questions that I can ask to help this individual? Um, this is the problem that they're facing with. What can I, what are they struggling with? Really? What's the, the root cause of the problem? Because this is interesting. A lot of the times what we're focusing on is the symptom of the problem as opposed to the actual root cause. So for example, if you're going for a run and you're out of, out of breath, you're thinking, oh shit, I'm out of shape. That's the symptom of the problem. The real problem is that you're not making time for your own health and being able to take care of yourself. And so a lot of the time, yes. you know, you, you can 
can help them focus on this, the root cause and be able to take them out of that glass jar and be able to say, hey, look at, have you thought about it from this angle? And even if you're not an expert yep. in it, you can help them shift their point of view. And then maybe down the line, there are some financial opportunities that can come up um, organically, as opposed to like, sh like Grant Cardone shoving shit down their freaking throat until they buy. There's more of an organic process that is long term and you're building connections and a familial feeling with the people that you're connecting with, as opposed to um, making nine out of 10 of them kind of look at you like, oh, he's just in it for the, the profit kind of a thing. Um, and it's, yeah. it's grown into a massive connection base for you, dude. I love that, man. Yeah. It's, I wasn't expecting that. I will put one other one other preface on that as well. Um, men versus women are a little bit different. Uh, women are more emotional based versus men are not. So when you're helping someone, um, a lot of times women just want to be heard and listened to and mm -hmm. work through their own thought process and feelings. Men sometimes just want to repeat themselves and then be told what to do. Because and again, that's not always the case. But men, honestly, a lot of times just need to be told what to do. And they're there and it's like they want the advice, right? That's why men typically give advice. When, you know, when you or your so spouse say, or yeah. say husband or wife, we'll give that scenario. Husband and wife are arguing. Wife is like, you're this, 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 this. The man wants to be like, well, I can see the solution. It's the easiest thing in the world. It's this. A woman doesn't want to be told that a woman wants to work and process through her own things and hear the emotions that are going on. And she most of the time knows the answer. She just needs to work through the and process those feelings and emotions. By the way, I, I'm terrible on this with even my own wife. Like, I'm always like, no, let's fix the problem. Let's fix the, the problem. Solution's and right here. We trouble. see the solution. Damn yeah, it. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's we like, I can see that, it. Man. Damn it. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. But women, <laughs> women are not that way. And nope. as a man, it is so hard to see that all the freaking time. And I make that mistake every single day. I'm still making it to this day. But men, because men are just different. So when you're processing things and helping things, just know that sometimes women are a little bit more emotional based. Not all women, just like all men are not just tell a lot of men need to work through it. Uh you know, those that need to work through it typically repeat themselves like two or three times what they need, like in different, the exact same scenario in like three or four different ways. They're working through that issue. They're a more um, emotional base. So, right. Just temperamentally speaking, you know, like men are more interested in logic and uh, things as opposed to women who are typically more interested in people and um, the emotions behind it instead of the logic. And so it causes yeah. all kinds of problems. So when you're looking at helping somebody contributing to their business, you look at from, from their point of view and the gender comes into that too, as well as other psychographics that you can analyze based on how you met them, what they're interested in. And generally speaking, a female entrepreneur is likely to be more on the masculine side when it comes to the, the, the at least the way that they filter monetary situations through their lens right and yeah. so there's no overgeneralization between the two and you, there's all kinds of analysis that needs to take place goes back to my my second analytic tool man <laughs> being able to, to analyze what they need and being able to, to yeah. help with them, um for sure that's I love it. Thank you for that. Cause that's actually going to help me big time, especially when it comes to building relationships and getting away from the transaction, um, trying to get something instead of giving something. Right. Uh, cause it's yeah. natural. We, we all can, can succumb to that weakness. And I think that yeah. there's really something to learn there, man. So thank you, dude. Um, for real. What about the marketing side of things? We can talk about that in terms of building that one-on-one -on -one relationship and also on the one-to-many scale. Let's say giving an ebook to somebody, then on the back end, expecting them to, to buy your, your front of the funnel and move through the funnel. Do you look at marketing the same way where you're just giving and then how do you go about converting them into a paying client? Because we got to at the end of the day. How do you look at that, yeah. that conversion, that transition? I mean, that's a lot harder uh, that you need different funnels and to build people into funnels. Uh, I would say I'm really good at driving people there, but I'm not great at the funnel. So my advice would be just OK. I think there's people who are way better at that. I probably give away way too much and don't have somebody that's a, a funnel person. So I'm probably honestly not the best person for that. There's a lot of amazing like funnels out there like click funnels that guy um i can't remember his name but he's really really good um you know nathan barry uh, there's just people who are really really good at funnels i'm not one of them so i typically give away way too much for free and 
I do more, um, most of my revenue is based on people, not based yes. on online. Mm. So um, now calendar, we're driving people online. We're really good, but we are not good after driving them to us. We give away the farm for free way too much. Hmm. But I love, I love your model because it's got an inbuilt traffic cyclical nature to it because somebody sends the calendar link, somebody else checks that out. And so their traffic generates the traffic, which generates the traffic. It's got a built in flywheel within it, which is so freaking cool. Yeah. Uh, and then, so what's your monetization strategy with it? Is it, um, how do you look at really converting? I mean, with, it? with calendar, it's premium people who use the product tend to like the product. So if yeah. a person uses the product and they actually come back, most likely they're going to upgrade. It's like a 70% chance if they use it for more than a week or two and they set up a few things on the site, they're going to keep using the product and using it and using it and using it and using it. They kind of get addicted and love it and just realize, you know, it's there to help them make them better. So what about starting a SaaS? Because there's a lot of people that have a, a SaaS, for example. What are some mistakes that you've made that if you could go back and tell yourself, dude, just stop, stop freaking doing this one thing or do this one thing yeah. that you would have you would have had less struggle going through? Uh, what would you say to someone uh, like that? Number one thing, focus on revenue as quickly as humanly possible. Get people to put so, a credit, so they get people to pay you, get people to prepay you before you even start building the product. Mm -hmm. give them have them give you I love that. their credit card yeah see if they're willing to pay so, for what you're building before you invest a shit ton of money yeah. into because when we started building it uh, we were like oh let's let's get people and we had like probably 200 people that were like i want this willing to pay for it on this but when we launched the product it was crickets it was like three of those people actually signed up and put their credit card in. Mainly those people are just like, because they're super fans and they buy anything and they never use the product. Uh, make sure people are willing to give the credit card and actually charge their credit card. Hmm. Then you'll find out how many people actually want it when you ask for a credit card. It's so common of a mistake, dude. Like my dad, even for example, he invented something when I was a kid. It ended up making us go bankrupt because we he put all kinds of money into the damn thing. It was a cool invention, uh, but there was no yeah. buying demand for it. Like it, it made sense on paper. People you would think people would want it, but he didn't sell it before he built it. And he recently yeah. made the exact same mistake again. And I told him, man, before you invest 100K into the molding and then all of the things that go into it, sell it first. See if the market wants yeah. to buy it. And then use their for capital sure. ideally to uh, to actually build the product and, and bring them along for the yeah. journey. But he didn't fucking listen to yep. me, man. And he, he, you know, it's he's in a terrible situation again. But what can I do? You know, it's, it's, it's these things for happen. Sure. Yeah, um, I love that, man. It's starting with the selling of the thing rather than the building of the thing. It goes to courses. It goes to anything that you sell online. Make sure there's a demand for it. Get the messaging right before you you over invest into it. Um, I wonder if For there's sure. a correlate between that and not over investing in, in in these relationships without getting something in return, not giving some everything away, and then having nothing for yourself, where you end up destroyed, right? Like you said, for 15 years. Yeah. What about lessons? Yeah, there, I mean, man? i i had i had a uh, I had a way to monetize the back end. So you know, I have something that I can do for cheap uh, and yeah. that's worth a lot, and I still have that issue and. If people want that resource, I have that resource that I can continue on doing that for them in that manner. And it's highly beneficial to me. So, you know, where I'm able to help people um, for my core is on the marketing and SEO side. And I do that for lots of different companies. Um, so, but I've helped those companies out and then they're like, oh, we really like this. And then we help them out and help them out and help them out. And it becomes a financial relationship. So kind of more of that one in every you know, hundred that I help out, you know, that means I'm getting one a month. What about the naysayer that would say, well, people are just going to take advantage of me if I go at it from this lens, or I'm never going to have any. And people do. Myself. Yeah, of course. Right. People do. And you'll, you'll adjust and you'll, you'll change your way of doing things over time. And I've been royally screwed by some people as well. So, you know, I, I, we don't talk about the scars and stuff along the way, but you're going to have those. There's going to be issues. There's going to be problems along the way. And you just have to realize and build those into your model. Hmm. 
and just count on it happening instead of being devastated when it does and shocked and have your whole world view come sure. crumbling down because you weren't expecting it. You got to look at it from the, the realistic sure. view at, at the same time, right? So dude, in the marketing yeah. sense of things, what's a question that I should be asking you right now, but I'm not, that if I were to ask you, would provide the maximum amount of value that you could offer in terms of marketing advice? I mean, I would say like not necessarily a question, but kind of what we started and talking about in the very beginning is just start. Mm -hmm. I think as entrepreneurs, we're so concerned with having the product that's perfect, having the perfect marketing plan, having the perfect strategy, having the perfect this. That's why I say, go get some money, go raise money, raise some capital, meaning get a hundred customers to put, pay you $250 each before you even build the product and get started. Just start today. And you might fail and that's okay. Nine out of 10 businesses ish fail. I think it's actually much higher, but you know what? Those are people who actually started. Think about the 999 out of a thousand that never even start. Stop people and actually start and you're going to fail at some things. You might be successful. Then you fail again. Then you'll fail again until you figure out all these ways that I failed the next time around, you're going to get better and better and better and better until you become successful and you become very, very, very successful. And that's what I find in marketing. People aren't willing to try. That's what I find in entrepreneurship. People just aren't willing to try and they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So putting aside everything that you think that I can do for you, what's something that you're struggling with in your life right now that if I were to be able to contribute to would would help things out for you? Let's 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 flip this thing around. You asked me earlier, so I want to see if I can contribute to you. And this could be a learning lesson as well. Yeah. So. I mean, struggling for me in my life is you know what? We're always looking for more people that we can help out. So I like meeting really amazing people that want that become those one in 10 people that help me out in, in every walk of life. So I like meeting those people. That's something I'm struggling with is to find those people. Another thing I'm struggling with, which probably can't help out with, but that's okay is, you know, it is hard finding really amazing um, friends in the same walk of life. I mean, again, mm -hmm. getting yeah. real here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's finding it's hard finding friendships especially in this entrepreneurship world where we're all working on our projects 24-7. Yeah. We don't have time to get, form relationships. And I have three kids, which adds complexity that when I hang out on the weekend, I need to have friends that have the same general age range so our kids can get along so that they're not in fights so that I can actually enjoy my time with other friends. So that's mm -hmm. something I've been struggling with in life is finding friends, also same area, same economical situation, people that have this, that, um, yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Absolutely. Dude. It's something we all struggle with. And I think this is something that, that I've been able to figure out recently in terms of using AI to facilitate these relationships, which is fascinating because one of the things that I've taught AI to do is to find podcast guests, find individuals who are like me, who I can connect with and have fascinating conversations with and be able to do the research that psycho and it generated a psychoanalytical uh, report for me and, and say, okay, yeah. is this person is fitting your criteria in terms of um, what you, and it'll give me names. It'll give me specifics in terms of how these relationships could be formed give me suggestions in terms of how you can go about helping them. And you can use AI not to replace the relationships, but to facilitate them to begin uh, to, to find them and to be able to, to um, connect at a deeper level. Whereas if you didn't have that research on them, uh, you wouldn't have been able to, to do it. Uh, so I could, I'd love to explain to you exactly how we're using AI to find people. Yeah. And to let's hear it. With them. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool, man. Um, I can explain a little bit. It's uh, essentially, we've got a prompt that we use with, with OpenAI's engine. And yep. we say, scan for for these types of people who would have this type of, uh, we, we give it a, a target audience avatar that we have the AI generate, by the way. And it finds all of the people who have published things online that fit within that criteria. Comes back with a list of okay. names. 
And then I say, okay, so with this list of names, who are all the people that would even more so be specifically uh, likely to have a, a joint venture opportunity or a strategic partnership that we could move forward with down the road? And more importantly, who's a, a relationship that we could build that would be able to stem who knows what as a result of it? And then it takes a thousand names, gives me, cool. let's say, a hundred names. These are the people to focus on, Yeah. right? And so your name, <laughs> yeah. for example, was in one of the this list of the AI that it generated for me. And then it goes even deeper in, in forming um, channels to reach out to them and be able to have the... You the bastard, messages. you didn't even write the email. <laughs> I don't care. You'd be surprised. The, it, it, AI does a hell of a lot of the work for me, which is freaking no, sweet. I'm, I'm tell, I, AI is awesome. AI yeah. is cool. It's, it's cool, man. And it's facilitating fascinating relationships and friendships and conversations that without the AI I wouldn't have been able to, to have. Uh, so maybe that's one yeah. of the things you can try, man. Use an AI to see. Uh, yeah, love to try it. Yeah, it's cool as shit. Too. Love to try it. What are some of the other ways? Yeah, I'll go try it out. I'll, and I'll share the prompt so. with you. And I'd love to, to share the prompt with you. Cool. Just even with ChatGPT4, it works. Um, what are some other cool. ways you're using AI right now, man? You know, we're in the middle of building an AI tool. We've been using it for a lot of different people. I'll pitch it here. You'll you'll love it, hopefully. Uh, I can basically take any podcast out there and it takes the podcast, puts it into our system and makes a fully fledged, fully optimized article and auto post it to your WordPress blog. Auto post it. I freaking love that, dude. Zero human intervention yeah. whatsoever. Zero human and it does... Uh, mm -hmm. Title tag, a description, a custom image with Dolly that uses your color scheme on your website, optimized title. It takes takes three titles, optimizes which one would work the best, which one would rank the best in Google. That's H1s, H2s, and internally links and externally links your entire blog, hmm. um, all as part of the tool. So that's what we're building right now. We're currently, it's built. We probably launched it in like two weeks. It's on articlex.com articlex.com dude i love that dude I, yeah i love the fully autonomous so that's what we're doing in yeah it's fully autonomous in any video so if you do reels if you do uh like youtube reels instagram reels or podcasts you can literally just sign up for it um and put in your podcast url and anytime a new episode comes out mm -hmm. you post that episode it goes and takes it automatically an article in the very very near future you can say i want three articles for every single podcast and it will make three articles and optimize them and schedule them out during the week and you're looking at it from an seo point of view too so it's building your rank up at the same time what about other social because this is something i need desperately dude i've searched for it and it's not out there yet i need something that yeah. i upload a podcast episode and maybe the text not here yet but it automatically splits them all up into shorts into to minor youtube videos based on the questions opus so, opus.pro yeah it, it works but it's like it's not perfect yet you know it's not perfect it's, none, of are, none of them are none of them are perfect zero human yeah i mean the thing is is you want human because every single video is going to be a little different you act different you do this and i think uh, those are getting closer and over the next year that will be an amazing tool along with two or three yeah. others um but yeah that's what we're trying to do but i've i've automated it from you post something and i'll make an article out of it by the way it'll embed your video in there and do all that. And then right now you can put it to draft or you can put it live. I recommend putting it to draft and just having a quick little look ski over it, but you can go fully automatic and fully automated. So it, uh, it helps make you a better priority. So we launched that in literally like two weeks. So sign up for that, uh, article x.com. Sweet, dude. I love that. I wonder if you can tailor some other social media platforms with it too. So a, a LinkedIn post for every podcast with a LinkedIn description. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll be there. We, we already do it, but it's a matter of we're doing it manually, like a system's all doing it. It's a matter of building, like we have this built, like it's running through like obviously chat and stuff like that, but it's also running through like four or five other generators and copyscape and actually running it through making sure adding like real voice, real tone and essentially mm. other things in there that make it you and add you into the mix because a machines don't uh, add you into the mix. And, but there are a few programs that do add you into the mix. So it's running, I, we literally use five different softwares um, of you outside of chat. So it actually sounds like you, your voice and tone, and we can publish each one to different bios in this. So you could have three podcasts all going to the same blog 
and it going under different people bio. It's pretty cool. And then you can automate the service end of it too, because you're giving free promotions to the podcast guests, for example, then you're automating the, yes. the, the giving that you're talking about. And then one out of a thousand yes. turn into a multi-million dollar deal without you having to, to provide the service yourself. It's so freaking cool, yeah. man. One of the things that comes to mind when it comes to having the you embedded into it is having an AI analyze all your journals, for example, all your social media posts, yes. everything you've ever considered. <clears throat> output it ever online or, or offline and having it yep. truly understand you have it map out your psyche and then be able to write from your point of view based on however much yep. data you're able to give it you can also write it from a third person's perspective too so you can write about you or you can take somebody else's video and give a third person perspective of that video yeah or podcast pretty cool we want to, we and do that, Google, dude. Google loves it because you're not just regurgitating stuff that's been talked about online. Yes. You're actually using your voice. You're using you, which Google freaking loves. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. We're using Yeah, we're doing it already too. for a lot of major sites. So like ESPN, Hollywood Live, Motherly, Benefits. Hmm. Um, I mean, Read Rights, Tech Report. I mean, a lot of major publications. Um, and uh, you know, I can't name necessarily clients and stuff, but where if you look at top 35 companies in the world, I bet three of them actually, I know three of them are using it. Amazing, man. So yeah, sign up for that guys. It's going to be, it, it's, it's pretty cool. We have a wait list right now. We are slowly letting people in. So over the course of the next three weeks, we'll be doing that. And then also we're doing an affiliate program where we'll offer 30% commission for life on anybody you refer. Upgrade, downgrade, you get all the, those perks. Sweet, dude. Are you leveraging the calendar.com audience as an affiliate for the Article X audience? Well, for sure. So yeah. Freaking cool, dude. I love that. That's amazing. Dude, I love it, man. Yep. Is anything, what else do you, do you want to add to this before we kick this off? We had an interesting conversation. That's that's it, man. It's It's been a great conversation. So I'm looking forward to trying your thing and uh, hopefully everybody here can enjoy that. Enjoy calendar. Um, let's go. Love it, dude. Okay, man. Thank you so much for being here, man. I'll send you the prompting that you can use to, to find and then uh, structure love potential it. meeting opportunities afterwards. And we'll keep in touch, brother. Thank you for sharing everything. Seriously. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. All right. I hope you enjoyed that podcast episode. And if you want to get a free copy of my book, go to kylesbook.com and you can get a copy there. I'll talk with you soon.